information. Uh, so I think I'm gonna say a little political more today because of the situation. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna actually try to deal with some preconceived notions that people have um and 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 sort of think things through a second. You know, I said to you a few weeks ago, I mean, and I've been saying this the past couple of weeks, really, when I, I see people siding with the terrorists, you have to wonder, is it is it ignorance or is it evil? And I, you know, it's, 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 I, I don't know. At, at this point, you know, if someone is that ignorant, it's, it's, it's not a good sign. But we have a new level this, this week where, where um, the Hamas seem to really uh, believe people are either that stupid uh, or that evil because they have the, um, the hostages that were released in this deal. Which, you know, they told them, you know, you better wave and say thank you, because if not, we're going to kill the people we still have here, your sisters and your brothers and your husbands. Um, you know, so like, and actually people are like saying these things like, they're, they're way, yeah, yeah, you know, thank you for killing and murdering and raping and, 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 and torturing my whole family and I. And, and like people are actually saying, well, these are nice people. So we have we have like a really very bizarre situation of 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 that where these people know, excuse me, I have to raise my thing. People know that um, that uh, Hamas realized that people are going to believe these crazy, crazy things either out of stupidity or 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 out of or out of uh, ignorance. So I, I wanna I wanna actually talk about some some principles of of thought that people take and 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 how we think and how uh it's important to think and, and then some mis misconceptions that we have. So first I wanna I wanna share one thing. Again, I I I said that the, the you know Israeli government's a political entity, it's not a religious entity. And they decide what they decide. They didn't ask the rabbis about this deal. I think there's a, it, it's a very good side. This is not the right thing to do. But there is there is a side to save a person's life at all costs, which that really is the fundamental uh, Jewish tenet. And this is important to understand this because, you know, Hamas and, and people like that Really, are death culture. They, 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 they welcome death. And I was just thinking about the stark contrast of the most fundamental principles of of what is true. And I want you all to understand this because this is fundamental. And this is why, even if it was not the right thing to do to make this trade, because you know Hamas was bombing Tel Aviv tonight because you gave them a week to to reload. I mean, you know, that's what has happened. Uh, they killed three people in a terrorist attack because they they had they had the pressure off them. So you save these people and they killed more people and they're bombing more people. So whether this is the right thing to do the wrong thing to do, it's a very complicated question, which I wasn't asked. But but again, I, I want to maybe, even though I don't think it was right, to defend the rationale of the maybe mistaken uh, Israeli government. Um, and that is that like this, there is a very fundamental principle. It says that when God created the world, all of the species were created in groups, in mass groups. A lot of elephants, a lot of horses, a lot of crocodiles. There was one entity that was created in a singular fashion. That's humanity. Man was created as one couple. But why? Why didn't God create a lot of people? Right? He created a lot of tigers. Why did he create a lot of people? Why did he create everyone from one person? Meaning male, female is one entity. Adam and Eve, why? So Talmud says, and this is the guiding principle that that is is guiding principle in Jewish life and should be in all of your lives, in everyone's life. And you'll see the stark contrast between these other terrorists with how they think. The reason why 
The world was created from what human being is to teach you the following lesson that whoever saves one person saves an entire world. Whoever kills one person kills the entire world. Because the world came from one person. This has tremendous ramifications. This means every person has to look at themselves and say, the world was created for me, not in an egotistical way, but that means that I am important because God created all humanity from one couple. That means every person has a mission. Every person is dear. Every person is important. And, the, and that is the Jewish view of the world. So they're flipping upside down, trading in people for thousands of terrorists. And, 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 and okay, I, I, it's not necessarily the right calculation, but I do understand because that is the Jewish view. And that should be everyone's view. That's certainly not the view of these people. These people, you know, are terrorists. And terrorists don't value life by definition. This is not for Jewish life. This is everyone's life. A Jewish person needs to understand that every life is so valuable. So that's why the bizarre, bizarre nature of listening to the news, the, they're killing people. Yeah, because we're being killed and the people who are killing us didn't say, cease fire, we want to stop this. They said, putna, putna is Arabic for a pause to reload. <laughs> So they didn't change their mandate of destroying the Jewish people. They just said, okay, we need a break because we're losing and we need to re, 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 reload ourselves. And they broke it. They said thousands of missiles and they commit terrorist attacks on the set the, during the thing, during the ceasefire. So we live in a world where people have, have crazy ideas. And, and unfortunately, these terrorists really have, have uh, um, no value for life. And the real position of the world is supposed to be that every single life is precious. And, you know, again, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I, I don't think it's right with the, with the, what the government is doing to that government because it's very nice you want to save civilians, but you're endangering your people. Uh, you're, you're, telling, you're telling terrorists, we're going to bomb this place. It's unheard of. No one's ever done this in war because it's really stupid. You know, we're going to bomb this place. Everyone should leave. So who leaves? <laughs> Only... So the bad people say, we're going to stay here. And, you know, no, they leave also. So you're basically telegraphing. How, how do you how do you win a war? This is war. War is terrible. But 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 but, you know, that's a Jewish principle. And the principle is not the pseudo belief system of the U.N. Turn the other cheek. But they don't mean it for them. They mean it for us. But we don't. We shouldn't be living like that. But the Israeli government, Israeli government, and they and they have their own uh, value system, and they want to prove that they have these ideas more than they, the, 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 the 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 so-called views of the nations that they accept this. Uh, we don't accept this. The rule is, someone comes to kill you, you must kill them first, because they are killed. They are terrorists. That's the reality. That's the nature of the game, and and you know those who see through it see through it, and those who don't. Are either very, very ignorant, extremely ignorant, crazily ignorant, or there's something not good inside of them. So, with that introduction, I, I wanna, I wanna get a, even a little bit more racy this week with Dan's permission, because I, I, I wanna actually now uh, um, deal with some of the 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 concepts uh, that are givens in our society. In America, they are givens. In the Western world, they are givens. And I want to question them. So it's a little dangerous because, you know, you can't question these things. But I will, and we'll discuss it and see what everyone thinks. It Really, right now, in, in, in America and the Western world, there is the thing that is the worst thing you could be and the best thing you could be. What's the worst thing you could be is a racist. What's the best thing you could be is open-minded. Those are the two rules. 
and I, and I want to I want to understand what those rules mean because I I don't know that we understand what what we're saying, and we're all you know we're we're all uh, accepting things you know I see that someone there has a has a has a has a as a, a a um a poster of President Trump former President uh, Trump, and one of the things that that President Trump did which which is which is you know I, which. We'll probably get in the nomination now again. Is that a lot of the the Republican candidates would would have the deal with the assumptions that were imposed upon them? You know, the guy interview interview someone. Well, have so tell me, have you stopped beating your wife yet? Uh, 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 uh. And they would answer the question with the assumptions of the of the of the of the interviewer. And Trump said, "I don't accept your assumptions." Which is very a very smart thing to do because what happens when people assume certain things, they put on their reality on you, and then you're working within their within their construct. And who said I accept your construct? And that was that was one of the reasons that one of the approaches that he did, which was which is very smart uh, and 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 good in the sense of trying to move the the presumptions back. So I want to talk about these, so to speak, sacred cows, as they say, for society. So racism. Now, I know it's the worst thing in the world. And I know the best thing in the world is to be open-minded. Let's talk about open-minded first, because that'll be a little bit easier. Second one's going to get a little bit stickier. So first of all, open. what does it mean to be open-minded? What does that really mean? And what do people mean when they say it? See, I feel I'm a very open-minded person. You could tell me your opinion, and I will hear your opinion, think about it. If it makes sense, I, I'll, 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 I'll go further with it. But I have my opinion, and my opinion is based on what I believe to be true after much research and investigation, and therefore. I will, although I actually believe that I am a million times more open-minded than people claim they're open-minded, but I will not be called open-minded. Why? Because I might come out and say, I think your opinion is wrong. As a matter of fact, that is required upon all thinking people. Every person who thinks needs to live their life based on conclusions that they believe to be true. When we were kids, when I was a kid, there was a concept called tolerance. Tolerance is actually a very positive idea in America. It really made America an amazing place. What was tolerance? Tolerance, as the philosopher John Stuart Mill defines it, says, I disagree with you, but I will not physically force you to believe what I believe. And that's how America was founded, because they were living in Europe and there was persecution of every single religion. Whatever the religion that was in power persecuted the other ones. So they created a system. You got freedom of religion. Freedom of speech. I tolerate you, meaning I disagree with your religion. I disagree with your ideas. But I don't physically force you to change them. I tolerate them. That was the language when I was a kid. But that's changed. And when did that change? I, that change happened. I missed the change. I was in Israel for the change. <laughs> the change happened someplace in the mid-80s and 90s, because I flew to America sometime in the 90s, and all of a sudden I heard a new language. I never heard this language before. It was a foreign language to me, everyone was speaking. It was still English, but it didn't make any sense. They said, well, if it's true for you, it's true. And I said, really? That's a unique idea. So you mean, if I hold up this book, and I say it's a book, and you say, well, I think it's a large horse. So there's no longer a position that I say, well, I tolerate you, you're a bit strange, 
And, you know, I tolerate you. But I think that um, that you're wrong. I think you're dead wrong. I, I can't say that anymore. Now I'm saying, well, it's true for you. Mean there is no reality anymore. That was the switch that happened in America. A dangerous shift. Now, I understand why it happened. Because tolerance wasn't working so well. I understand that people are intolerant. You know, I, I remember as a kid walking through the streets and I wear a yarmulke and I, I, I you know, got attacked numerous, many times. So America was, you know, it was tolerant, but it wasn't so tolerant. You know, I mean, I remember thinking when I was a kid, I always imagined, could there be a black president in America? And, and at that time, as a kid, it was very hard to imagine that, you know? And you would have thought when 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 America voted for a black president, maybe people would say, hey, it's a great change. America really is, is accepting people. But somehow the, the narrative got worse. No, we're worse than ever. I don't know. I don't think America, America has actually, you know, has developed now what is not a racist country because countries normally are homogeneous societies. America is it was an experiment to create a heterogeneous society, people that are all different. And this is the problem, because when people are different, this could be a beautiful thing, but not the way that we've gone right now. Where have we gone? Instead of tolerance, we've gone to the idea that if I think I'm right and I think you're wrong, that's too dangerous for people. They can't live that way. Let's change the dynamics. Instead of saying you believe you're right and the other person's wrong, you can't say that anymore. You have to believe that everyone's right in their own world. That's called being so open-minded that your brains fall out. That's what that is. Why? Because at that point, there's no truth. You can't believe anything, right? It's a terrible, terrible thing. You don't understand what this does to people. It makes it that there's no belief. Only what is being substituted by the powers that be of what you should believe. Because you can't believe anything. So they make up certain, you know, this, this you got to believe. Because anything else is bad. But the, 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 the idea of a human being coming to his conclusion and believing they're right has become a intolerant, racist position. That's very, it's, it's a shame. It's a real shame. And this is, by the way, just to understand this, this is a philosophical uh, mistake. It's a philosophical mistake. Those who know anything about philosophy, the, 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 the philosophical uh, uh, um, excuse for this is called relativism. But this is a wrong thing. When I talk about, you know, is ice cream, is vanilla better than chocolate? That's a relative question because I have my taste bud, you have your taste buds. So it's not the same frame of reference, but we're talking about the same frame of reference, you know, within certain parameters too, there are two opposing things that both cannot be true. Now, sometimes obviously it's a greater dynamic, but if one person says, I believe in God, I'm the one God, and a person says he believes there is no God, they both can't be true, they're mutually exclusive. And so, therefore, the inability now to actually think and hold an opinion has been an awful process that's gotten so much worse now because what came in instead in this vacuum of people stopping to think? People had strong opinions in those days, in the past. That was good. I should be tolerant. I disagree with you. Do I need to respect your opinion? Hmm. Well, that's a tough question. Because what happens if opinion is really, really stupid? Right? I, 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 I don't know. There's, there's, I, there's something called like this, this pasta, pasta religion. Did you ever hear about this thing? Some guy made a joke, like he made this thing, the pasta monster, and he made this a fake religion. He signed it up, and it became an official religion. It's like, so like if a person says something that's really, really a position that's really stupid, I may be able to find respect for the human being. And if I look 
deeply and see that every person is made in the divine image. I may be able, and I should be able, hopefully, unless someone gets rid of their divine image so greatly by becoming a terrorist and a murderer and, and, and a barbarian, but I should be able to look and see as a spark of, 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 of godliness in this person. But the opinion has to be worthy of respect. It's worthy of tolerance because hey, I got to tolerate it. You have your idea. Do I need to respect it? Well, I, I don't know. If it's a very stupid idea, well, I might think, well, I'm sorry. I, I might not say it to you, but I think it's a, it's a dumb idea because maybe it is. So that's what's happened. So now what they did was, the, the uh, I don't know who they are, but but what's evolved is, is that the highest goal is to be open-minded. Open-minded does not mean a thinking person who hears other sides and can calculate them. You know, for us in, in the Torah world, we are very open-minded. Here is a book called the Talmud. Book of the Talmud. And in the Talmud, every page of the Talmud is filled with arguments of two sides, back and forth. And the truth is, the only Talmudic scholar is one that can hear both sides of the equation. And that's why, you know, they had a phenomenon in America was happening with Talmudic scholars. They often go to law school and they take the LSATs and they do very well. Even they didn't go to college. They went to yeshiva because the dynamic of the thinking process is to hear the other side of the argument. It's crucial. That's open minded. I think you think I hear what you're saying. I'm trying to see your point of view. And then I have to come out with a conclusion because I don't come out with a conclusion I've given up my humanity. I'm not a thinking person anymore. In that vacuum, what was placed instead is Facebook slogans. That's what it is. These guys are good. These guys are Nazis. These guys are racist. They don't. And, and no one forgot no one, no one how to think. No one knows how to think anymore. They stop reading. They're watching idiotic shows on television that are beyond stupid. And a constant brainwashing for a society that's lost the ability to think because the value that was told to them is open-mindedness, which doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean. Open-mindedness is a great value. If you could hear the other side of the story, put yourself in the person's situation, hear their perspective, that's, the, that's a great, great thing. Great thing. To do with your friends, to do with people that you disagree with, to hear where they're coming from, to go in their shoes, to think from their side. It's fantastic. In, in, in cases of normal relationships, I'm not about to talk about the terrorists you can't deal with, but in a normal thing with your friends, you disagree with someone, be open-minded, go into their head, hear where they're coming from. It's the greatest thing in the world. It would make it would make peace from amongst people. But that's not what we're talking about. Open-mindedness does not mean that. They're the term is a lie. It's a misnomer. Open-mindedness today means no opinion because you're too stupid to have an opinion or it's illegal to have an opinion because if you do, you're a racist because you think that the guy's wrong. You hear what I'm saying? Is this radical, Dan? Am I good? Keep going? <laughs> Rod, am oh, I, yeah, am Rabbi, I yeah. My it, Am awesome I hitting too stuff. Many funny bones? Oh no, no, not at all, Rabbi. I am okay. uh, totally uh, on board with how subjectivity leads to chaos. Okay, Moral good. relativism leads right to chaos. Yeah, that's right. Now let's go for one another another uh, um, one that's that's really a, a sacred cow. The idea of of racism, because that is what's what is called the the worst thing to be today. Right, you can just say oh, Trump's a racist. Trump's a racist. I don't know what it means. What does it mean? What does it mean people say that? I don't know what it means. Really, I don't. I, I've tried to read critical race theory a couple times. I, I, it was such, it was a jumble of nonsense. I, I didn't, you know, but it, it seemed to be very racist. Actually, <laughs> it seemed to be like the most racist statement. But I don't know. I guess that's okay. But. What what is the idea of racism in in terms of the negative? And and I want to try to explain to you what I believe is is appropriate racism as not a negative, derogatory, bad thing, 
but a good thing and where it turns bad. And I don't think my definition is going to be acceptable. I don't think it's going to be politically correct. And I don't think that uh, uh, I'm going to get on the cover of Time Magazine as the uh, as the uh, spokesperson for Bud Light from now on. So let's, what is it? So racism, I guess, is you're defining a race in one way or another. And you are saying this race has these propensities this way. Now, if we think about it a second, how is it possible the race doesn't have a propensity? I mean, we all learn basic biology. If you really are a race, if you're a family, a family does have similar, similar genes. It's a gene pool there. There's a there's a there's a, a culture. There is there, there is a DNA. There is similarities amongst the familial group that a race would also share logically. So the presumption that a race would not be have certain tendencies because that would be called a racist statement. I don't know. It seems to me to be self evident. I don't know, you know, I, I know that like, you know, a, a, a predisposition for sure. Now, so where is, so, and that's true. If you look at it, it's, it's obvious. It seems to be fairly obvious. I don't know. It seems <laughs> you can't say what's obvious today, but you go to a certain place. Like, you know, people always say, you know, they, they want, they want to have like the idea of, of, uh, of, um, you know, uh, what do they call it? The equality of the same amount of people. But but you know there there are a lot of more more African Americans in the NBA than 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 white people, okay? Do we want to go and make the rule there? I don't know. Are, do I see certain races may have certain qualities? And the answer is, I, besides for logic, from the Torah perspective, for sure, racism versus prejudice versus stereotypes. Good. Let's, let's try to understand this. Stereotypes and prejudices. What's the difference between understanding the point that I'm saying, that a race has a propensity, where does that go sour? Where does it go sour? And it's very important to understand. It goes sour in two ways. First of all, we don't know any particular race, what their qualities are, because we tell you, we don't even know what really races are. And from the Torah perspective, there are 70 root nations Every root nation has quality. Let's talk about it in the positive for a moment. Every one of the 70 nations, it says, has their unique quality. That's their talent. That's their skill. So first of all, on the one level, you instead of looking at the negative, it's the positive. It means that every nation, every family, everyone has something they could do. And this is so important because if people really wanted to have a diverse society, and diverse is not uh, diverse is not a a a a um a, a a quality in itself. Diverse is a quality only if I take differences and I find a way to unite the group. That is why, you know, that's why I say America was based on the, the idea of states' rights and states and federal law, the federal government. That was based on the Torah structure of the 12 tribes. Each had a unique system, but they had to combine together to become one nation. And that's really a beautiful thing if every group could bring out their qualities. Now, there's a few things, problems that. First of all, we don't really know what race is anymore. We don't know who exactly what, because the nations are really mixed up. There were 70 root systems. But that's that's not the negative of racism. That's a positive. That means that everybody has their strengths and the unique challenges and the unique strengths. Where does it become dangerous, as Nancy said? We're kind of dangerous like this. When you talk about an aggregate, you talk about a, a group. First of all, you can't tell what the group is, and you don't know their strengths unless you have it in the Torah, which we do have 
some of the people, mentioning some of the nations, their strengths. So unless you have God tells you this is the strength of this people, how do you know what it is? <laughs> you're viewing it and you're putting it on your own, your own uh, 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 small vision of what it is. But the problem is, so first of all, you don't know what the nation is and you don't know what their strengths are. But the second problem is, and this is this is a bigger problem, is, is that it's talking about an aggregate. Any individual has free will to become what they become. So what Nancy said before, the stereotyping or the prejudice is the danger of it. But to realize a nation has a, a, a quality and a strength and has a propensity is not only not a bad thing, it, it, it's, it should be a fairly obvious reality. Again, what it is, who's the nation, and and the understanding that does, that does not that does not bound anybody or bind anyone within that group is is an obvious situ is an obvious statement. But 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 there's a struggle right now in the world because they try to make everyone the same. They try to make it now everyone's different. They don't can get along, and 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 and. Even though we don't know what 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 Messi what each nation which unique quality of each race is, but for a nation to understand or an individual to understand that they have who they are, they might not know today which really root they come from, but but you have qualities, and just like your family has shared qualities, you may have that in terms of people that are like you, which may they may even be genetically and biologically related to you. You know, for, for 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 many many years, so so the idea of 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 whatever it means, the idea as as we said, it's not the problem is not understanding a nation has qualities. It's understanding that those qualities you can't go and say and judge and say well. Uh, uh, you're inferior, you're no good, because if you understand that God gave qualities to every nation, and everyone's quality is meant to be served and to be brought into the system, then it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Well, why would a person want to, why would a person want to lose that? And, and and again, you might not know what nation we're from. We don't, you know, because America is a conglomeration. It's not really, you know, but 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 the idea that different people have different strengths and that they are genetically a, a part of of their their makeup as well as their culture that that's that's a that's a reality. Uh, people don't want to talk about that because the danger Nancy just said. Just like we can't have, we can't have you know you believe in your rights and all this is wrong that's gonna be a problem we can't have this idea because we saw how that went well that may be true it, it, but but the alternative right now of people denying the obvious is not working out too well either because people don't know how to think so there are qualities now I, I I I'm gonna I'm gonna say something now which is, which will be extremely politically incorrect but I, I I'm I'm gonna say it anyway. And I'm going to say it in light of the of the um, of the the terrorist situation now in Israel, and and it's really you know I I I, I would take it as a call to to our Arab cousins, you know to to do hopefully like their 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 ancestor Yishmael who 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 became a very righteous person in the end of his life, and there are uh, Arabs who are who are. Uh, do this or embracing this, but the the Torah, the Torah, which really at a certain point in the process that we're getting to, and and the, the, the Christians know this and and the Jews know it, the way that the, the left is moving in the 1984 uh, um, uh, mode of of thinking, I, I don't know how they haven't banned the Bible yet. I, I don't know how they haven't done it. But 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 if they get enough power, they will certainly try to do that, you know, because again, Torah people do not understand without, without the explanation, and that's also why 
this is a great danger when um when people talk about like you know Sharia law if it's an Arab country you wouldn't have Sharia law okay it's, it's, that's what they all want to do but but um but but the the Torah uh um approach and the Torah laws we have a very complex system on application of the laws so much so that 40 years before the temple was destroyed the sages stopped judging capital cases already so people who read the torah and don't understand they they will uh, 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 take on that oh we should be just doing that the, the the reason why the rabbi stopped judging capital cases is because the world fell to a lower level so we the, there's a very strong application of torah how to apply different things so so it, it, it it's a very different system in that 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 the torah perspective would not be called this fundamental radical perspective, although we obviously believe what we believe is right and wrong, but there's a time where God is the judge and a time where the Sanhedrin, the courts, are the ones who judge those cases. And that is at a time when the world is in a greater state of clarity. The world's in a state of confusion now. And 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 uh in many cases, God is is the only judge, and we don't have a right to judge certain cases uh that we don't do. But the thing I want to share with you is so when people read parts of the Torah, they'll seem, whoa, wait a minute, this 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 seems to go against against the the common belief system of the world, and it does. So there is a place where it talks about Yishmael, the father of the Arab nation, and the verse says, para Adam, he will be, and this is the blessing that God gives to Yishmael's mother, Hagar. That he will be a very powerful nation. Yadol bakol, yad kol bo, his hand will be in everyone, and everyone's hand will be in him. They'll be fighting him. And it says, Uya para adam. He'll be a, a, a wild, para is a wild, wild man. And, and the sages explain that, that the Arab nation has these two qualities. He was from Abraham, Abraham was the first believer. And he was from the line of Hagar, who was from the, the ancient Egyptians, and I'm not saying nations were today, who were a, a, a certain wild type of people. And the combination creates a dynamic where, where this is a nation of people that have the belief power of Abraham. But sometimes it's uncontrolled. It has that wild component. Those are the two dynamics. Now, this is something that, again, you know, if I talk about the, you know, I, I'm talking about it because it's something the Torah tells me is is a quality of this nation, and it it it's it, it's it's a very dangerous quality when not used correctly. Why? Because when not used correctly, it means I believe something, and I'm I'm strong in my belief and therefore i can do whatever i want to do in 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 islam there are they have two beliefs that the two proofs they say the quran is true one is they say that you know if you, if you read it you'll see how how wise it is all right it's, uh, people can read things but they think and the second proof they want to say is that since Islam started in the year 622, and they spread out with throughout wars, and they conquered so fast, the sign that God was supporting their position. Now, I don't know if that's a proof, because I can think of a lot of reasons why that would be that way. But a, a nation that has this combination of, of a unbridled component connected with a belief they have is a strong recipe for uh, some of the extremist uh, uh, Islamic practices that we see in the world. Yeah, I'm not saying everyone's like this, but but you know it's a it, it, it's a it's a nature that we see playing out. This is not like you know something that we don't see. This is this we see. You see that there is. You know, if if twenty percent of of I don't know of Muslims are are what they would call today radical Muslims, 
people who believe that every nation must, must come under Sharia law, that's a large number. Even if it's a small less than that, it's still a gigantic number. And that's really a certain a certain quality. It was funny. I, I said to you before. I was I was listening to the to the son of the of the of the founder of Hamas talking again. You know, it's interesting to hear him talk. He's so passionate about it, and he's great in terms of like he got his he had his head screwed on right. But but there's there there is a certain you know strength, a certain wildness when it's combined with this belief system. So there you can go into dangerous territory. And that's really, really something that, that we see. And it's unfortunate because if that power of belief is directed in the right way, then it will be a good thing for them and a good thing for the world. And that really is, so what I, what I, what I really want today is, to, is for us to, to question the basic assumptions that people make in the world. The basic assumptions, the idea of this open-mindedness is not what's open-mindedness. Open-mindedness means that I could hear your side, but I can come to my conclusion and say, I think you are wrong. I believe you're wrong, and I believe I'm right. I tolerate you. The idea of racism as a problem is when I now say no one in that group can be different than that group. I understand what the group is. And they are limited to this, that, and it's inferior to another group. That's where it's negative. But where it's positive is to understand that nations do have qualities. And every nation's quality is supposed to be brought into the system. That is the approach that Hashem set the world up. The concept is that's like the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language is supposed to be like white light. And when you run it through a prism, it shows the colors of the spectrum of the rainbow. And the Hebrew language is the concept of what would be, would be inclusive of all the systems. And every language of the 70 languages and the 70 nations was a way, a system, and a process with certain qualities and certain challenges. And everyone within that system has the ability to take their God-given strengths and their challenges and to use it to bring it in the system. That would be an amazing diversity. Not just for the sake of diversity, but to say, ah, I have this quality and I want to bring it in. And that's where, unfortunately, America is, 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 in, a, is in a lot of trouble right now as a nation, as a country. And the world is because they don't understand these principles. They just mix the whole thing up. There's no unity in the, in the country. The country said we're unified behind a vision and we're different. And we want to go for a vision of goodness, of truth. Then you have something. Then you could have, you could take the strengths of different people and you could use them together. That really is where we've taken concepts that can be strengths but the inability to think through them deeply has now substituted slogans. And every guy who has an opinion you don't like is a racist. Every guy, and what does that mean? I don't know what it means, but it's bad. Well, I don't know. I do believe people have different qualities. Families have qualities, nations have qualities, and, and you have to look at your qualities. You might not be able to know what nation you're from, but you got to look at your qualities and figure out, these are my strengths, these are my challenges, and this is the process that I have to do my mission. And as I started this session tonight, that really is this fundamental concept, which even the mistaken Israeli government here is doing flips and turns and endangering our own people, unfortunately, they're doing it because in a certain place, the, 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 there's a principle that a person who saves one life saves a whole world. Because one person has a unique quality to bring into the system. And if everyone takes their qualities and brings it into a system of goodness, we move into a world of goodness. But if the concept is a, a culture of death and disregarding people's lives and pushing them down and telling them this is what it is, this is what you got to think, this is what you are, this is what, we, and then, 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 then we, we have what we have today. We have people supporting murderers and terrorists.
Instead of people saying, let me see the truth, let me think deeply, let me take my qualities and bring them into a system to elevate the world. Just like Adam did when he was first created. He wrote a psalm, one of the psalms we say on Friday night, where he turned around to the world, to all the creations and all the people, him and Adam and Chava, he says, come, let us sing praises to God. Because everything in the world has a purpose, has a place. And, and and a human being, it's a whole world. Even anything. So certainly, you know, everything you have is at a place in the world. That's why there's a, a, a forbidden law in the Torah to destroy. No, it's not one of the seven laws of Noah, but it, it, I, I assume that is also an obligation for the Bnei Noah because it's a logical law. The law in Torah is you're not to destroy something. You can't just take something and break it. It's forbidden. Oh, it's mine. I own it. What do you mean you own it? Why do you own it? Well, it is mine. I own it. No, because God gave it to you to do something with. So if you have a car, it's for a purpose. You can't just break something. How, how, where, where did, how could you break something? It makes no sense. It's, it's yours for a reason to do something good with what you have. So everything in the world has a place and has a time. And certainly every human being in the world is valuable, has a place at a time. If we celebrate life and see the differences and let people understand, yes, I have an opinion. I may be different from you, but I'm going to take my strengths and bring them to unify in the service of connecting to our source. And I, I got to bring it back to God because every single time, every one of these systems of of whether it, you know whether it's it's communism, whether it's 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 whether it's uh, you know John Lennon singing Imagine, whether it's 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 uh, Whatever it is, they all fall. They all fall. Because in a system that is not based in the root of reality, it's an illusion that's going to fall apart. So if the world unites and says there's one source, one creator, goodness in the world, and he created the world to give us good, and he put us in a challenging world so we can get our act together and we could do it. And I have skills I'm going to bring into the system to make this happen. We build the world and make it a beautiful place. Okay, those are my thoughts. Any comments, ideas, or questions? Wow. Very well stated, Rabbi. Thank you. We're, we're on some tricky ice, uh, thin ice parts there. I know some parts were a little bit, whoa, 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 where is this going? But we got to say what's true, and people got to hear it. People got to know it. Yeah, when you're know. dealing when you're dealing with moral relativism, these the people that are stuck in it, all they see is victims and victimizers, and they're 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 yeah, it's yeah, it's, they don't they don't afford anybody good qualities. It's it's yeah. either a victim or a victimizer, and then they react, uh, overreact, and yeah, they 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 like to be a crusader uh, as if uh, a victimizer is a, a a tyrant, and uh, all of a sudden. Uh, they're a freedom uh, or social justice warrior, they call them, and uh, they're fighting for the victim uh, that you're victimizing, and they don't realize that they're pointing fingers and several are pointing back at them in the process. Yeah, I, I know. And it I leads mean, to I, chaos. Just hearing some of these people talk, I, I don't listen to it, because, but like, it, 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 it's like, wow, wow. Some people are like, you know, the ones that are evil, but the ones well, that they're are losing their capability old. to think. Yeah, and and their no imagination rules why. over their intellect. All right, and that's why this is so. This is so amazing what's happened. I I don't I don't know that you know it it really is, is a shocking shocking situation what we're up to right now. That that you know with the advance of of technology right now, um, people have really lost their ability to think. And uh, and this process of 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 you know of uh, it, 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 it's on a high it's on a, it's on a massive level because you couldn't you couldn't brainwash people on this level before it was like this was like a dream of of a communist Russia wow we could control you know 
everyone's thinking. This is like like a dream come true. Before it's like, you know, we'll put stuff on on television, on the radio, whatever it is, and people will listen. And but but you know, the guy says, Hey, listen, I know it's propaganda, I'm not gonna listen. Now you put your you put it yourself on there and, and your algorithm sends you what you wanna go. It's like it's so easy to brainwash people when they have no ability to think right now. It's terrible. It's terrible. People need to, you know, people need to 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 become people again. And um, and unfortunately, without really coming back to the source of everything, they won't because they're going to make up their own things. And, you know, maybe it may be a little bit better, you know, you know, like the that. The, the, like I heard that guy and the, the guy was just elected in Argentina. You know, I said, I, I don't want to I don't want to rule over uh, what are the cats. I want to wake up the lions. You know, OK, I think that's great. I think that people start thinking the problem is when people start thinking they make up their own thing is a problem. The the concept of 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 America, democracy is not panacea. Uh, Hamas is democratically elected. But the concept that that if you give people prosperity, they'll want, they'll be able to be tolerant because they want to do their thing, they'll gotta do that. And you know, it 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 did it did bring America a lot of a lot of uh, unique um positive uh, uh things that, that were in the world. But um but I, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know I, I don't know if we can get there now. I really don't. But that's okay mm. because the reality is is that where we're going is is not the American utopia. Where we're going is the the Torah utopia, but, uh, because yeah. we're yeah. going to it's not it's not the utopia of uh, of uh, of you know uh, of, of just the capitalist system again that that worked well. It did work well. I you know it provided a lot of. Yeah, Rabbi, Sean, Sean on YouTube says it's like some have devolved back to the age of feudal peasants in Europe. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what people are asking for. Right? They're, they're asking for communism. They're asking for the it's 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 uh, it's amazing. But, you know, whatever, you know, right now, it's like I, I on the positive side, of Dan, I think what's going to happen is, is that, you know, all of this, all of this is a precursor for a time of, of, of clarity and revelation. And that's oh, yeah. what's I think the, the governments are going to spend themselves into bankruptcy in the process and uh, yeah. uh, try yeah. to yeah, pose as a, a, a savior to every solution to keep that kind of uh, subjectivity uh, uh, rolling and uh, uh, reality as though it's going to get more and more chaotic and, and until people realize that the light is already yeah. is the way. I I'll tell you something. I, I, you know, I, I think the Israeli government. Um, I, I don't know because I mean, thank God we got back uh, some of the hostages, and that's that's a very very vital thing. Um, but I, but I think the Israeli government has not been so smart with their process. You know, as now what people are accusing them of because because their their level of trying to play by the rules. Of of people that would that no one would do this in the world is I think is a mistake. I think they made some mistakes. But the good part about that I really enjoyed about the fact they made so many mistakes was that no Jew should put their confidence in the Israeli army. Not because you know they have some very holy soldiers. I mean, it's beautiful. They really have some. You know, they have some people that uh, are secular. But it's a lot. A lot are religious, you know, holy, righteous, beautiful people doing a lot of great things. But what I mean by that is that that the 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 the, the trust has to be in God, that God's running the show. If you think anything else is running the show, you you're 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 walking on the on the edge of idolatry. I'm not going to say it's literally an idolatry, but 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 it, it it is the root of it when you think there's anything else that really is running the show. If it's your great army, if it's your great president, if it's your great this, your great that, well, all of these things are terrible president, you tell you whatever it is, it's that's not that's not what's happening. So I I I don't I don't want to think, oh, they got it under control. No, I don't think they have under control. I know Hashem has under control. And I know God has under control. And it's moving to exactly where it has to go. And hopefully we'll have people make the right decisions. 
But we have a principle that God, let Lachim Yad Hashem, that God moves the hearts of the leaders of the world to bring about the global process. And the global process is clearly happening. And one of the things that will end with this point, which is really what you're saying, Dan, I think it's, it's so true. At the end of the, one of the ways that this whole thing transpires is people lose their confidence in anything else. It says the governments turn to meanness. The governments turn to her heretical, crazy ideas. That's part of the process before the Mashiach comes because people now put their confidence in this and that. It's like, you know, you start looking, you're saying, wait a minute. Really? Really? I mean, like, like, you know, you know, they got, you know, Trump on 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 these charges that like, I, I, I mean, come on, really? Like, really? I mean, like, you're not embarrassed? You're not embarrassed? It's such a joke. But like, the emperor's not wearing any clothes. And now people are starting to see the emperor's not wearing any clothes. They're, Wait a minute, this, this whole thing, every single conspiracy theory of the past three years has been exactly accurate. <laughs> Every single one. You know, it's crazy. So the thing came from the lab, the, the lab leak. Ah, oh, conspiracy. Oh, it's true. Yeah, you know, every single, you go through every single thing that they accuse you of being a conspiracy theory, and they're all, they're all true. So people are starting to look and say, wait a minute, where, where, where am I putting my trust? I, I can't trust these guys. And I think the the, the the trust in the government uh, is very, very, very low, and as it should be. And so when all of these paradigms, when all of these uh, these institutions that people have put their faith in uh, are shaken, so people will be open to experiencing a deeper, truer connection to the one ultimate source, which is God. Rabbi Nancy Grooms has a question. Oh, please, Nancy. Nancy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's my question. Uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, I don't know what's the population of the world, 8 billion people or something, you know. So we got yeah. 8 billion ideas out there, uh, 8 billion ideas of truth and everything. And Hashem has is known by quite a few different names but from what i understand what he is hashem is truth you know there's only one truth and uh so uh for me and a bunch of other people uh we try to read the the, the torah and stuff but we that's why we come to you rabbis so you can that's explain to us what the truth that hashem is trying to tell us and right uh, and we're grateful for that. And we realize that not all your rabbis agree and say the same thing, but deep down inside, you do, you know, for the most yeah. part. And yeah, uh, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Why well, we uh, come to you and listen to you, and we we are grateful for that. Well, well, I, I, I I'm very happy. I'm very happy to, you said that, Tar, and I'm I'm happy to do that because you know this is. You know, it's a decision that that I, I I think is is an important thing to do. Uh, I think there are there are people like yourself and people on these the, the, these this forum who are uh, true people, righteous people amongst the nations who want to do good, and they and you need to hear it. And you're right; that one's got crazy ideas, and they're not true. And like I said in the beginning, you know, we get I'll, I'll have a discussion with anybody. But, you know, what's true is true. And uh, I'm not going to say, well, it's true for you because it's true for you. Believe it. But I, I still will say it's wrong. You know, you can say what you want to say. But uh, the truth is the truth. And we know there's one God who created the world. The world is in the process of revealing that. And it's a very deep process. But the process is moving. It's going. It happens constantly. As we learn in our in our, we have a you know learning center now instead of in Israel, learning esoteric wisdom, the Torah, and we talk about every moment. There's there is no we're getting one step closer, and how that happens, we go through the great details of it. But it's, it's happening, and that's the process. And and what we have to know is that God put us in this world, and He wants us to do our part, do our part, and that is how we earn our place in the world. 
that place in eternity. You can't take the wrong side and be a bad person and say that you did something. You got to be on the right side. You have to know the truth. And as you said, the first starting point is what is true. Because, you know, if someone has wrong ideas, then whatever they do is not going to come out good. You know, the best you could say is, well, they had good intention, but they were totally wrong. And, and, and what they had they acted was wrong. So that and that's the reality. The reality is, and I said to you many times, like people who 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 you know, and 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 the rabbis, by the way, this the rabbis of you know that keep the Torah, we all do agree. Meaning that that I even if even if on a particular point I have another viewpoint, but when I hear the other rabbis' viewpoint, I also know how that's true, because that's within the framework of truth. I'll give you an example, very, very important example. The guy says, I was, I was teaching Talmud once to a group of doctors. They were visiting when I was teaching in Israel many years ago. They were visiting from the States. They used to come and learn with us. So I had a group of doctors. And they were learning Talmud. And there's all these different opinions of Talmud. And they were like bothered by it. And I said, I said, I don't understand. Did you have a, have a case where a guy came to you as a doctor and asked you for a prognosis and you gave him a plan what you thought was right? And he went to a friend of you, another doctor, so and you, another, had a different has opinion. a marker on your face. So, do you, did he have another opinion? And the guy said, Yeah. So, now is one right and one wrong? Well, not necessarily. Because you could have in a dynamic of a, a, a person who's trained in medicine, you could have two approaches that could both be right. So the guy has a heart problem. You can give him on a diet and exercise, and that might be the best thing if he pulls it off. And if he doesn't, maybe the surgery works. So maybe it could be both ways. Or even deeper, there are different types of medicine. So there's Eastern medicine, Western medicine. They look at the body, and they can have two different ways to treat it. So now... Here's where you got. Here's our problem, talk. So I go to the doctor, and he, and Doctor A says do this. Doctor B says do that. So I say, oh, there's two opinions here. So you know what? I'll go to my plumber and get a third opinion. No, no, that's not good. So I so I'll put the your arteries and put no. The, the plumber he can give his opinion about plumbing. He can't give his opinion about a doctor. He's not a doctor. So. I all rabbis that follow the Torah means that keep the Torah as it was given to Moshe. I'm not talking about you know reform the conservatives who reformed and changed it, but every Orthodox rabbi was in the system. So even if I disagree with this particular application, I don't really disagree with him because I'm a doctor saying this is the way to treat, and you say that's not the way to treat. And I hear your point. I think my way is the way to do it. But I hear your point. It's not wrong, but that's the danger. So, so here's the here's the point, and this is how we started. Very good, you asked this because this comes back to the very beginning. What the truth is is that yes, things are not always so black and white. Sometimes there can be different approaches. Where the world has gone crazy is now said that anything goes. So, you, you're a man. You think you're a woman. You're a woman. You're, you know, you think it. You, you, so now, whatever you want to be, you are. So now you create a world where there is no reality. So you've taken the beauty of understanding two sides of a story and having a broader perspective. And you sold that out for cheap thinking and said, there's no truth. That's what people have done. So my answer is every time there's a, 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 a authentic Jewish rabbi, I don't this I might disagree on the local point, but what he's saying is true also. I just I think that this made this different way to do it. That's all within the, the treatment of a doctor to a patient that are both possible scenarios. It doesn't mean it's a free-for-all. And that's that free-for-all phenomenon has made it that there is no truth. And there's no thinking people anymore. Or very few. I shouldn't say that because obviously, as you said, you're here to learn the truth. 
So there are, thank God, uh, uh, thinking people as yourself and people on this on this uh, this forum, and and God willing, we'll have a lot more thinking people and people who will who will want the truth as it says in the prophets. They will look for it. The 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 that Hashem will fill the earth with the knowledge of God, that the waters fill the sea. Everyone will want to know, and people will have the understanding at that time. All right, I gotta go, everyone. It's late. Shalom, we'll Rabbi. See you next week, by You guys will see you uh, tomorrow night with Rabbi uh, Zvi Avener, seven o'clock. Don't forget Tuesday nights a double hitter with Rabbi David Weiss and Rabbi uh, our, uh, 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 Yaakov Wobi. Yaakov Wobi is going to be doing a continuation awesome. on his series until tomorrow okay, right. night. And, um, and, uh, and Rod, so we're going to, we got to talk about the, uh, and Dan also got to talk about the uh, the event we're going to be doing in Texas. So those yes. who are in Texas. Yes. So, so January or early February, have you, have you settled on that? Uh, January, that? January, February. It's it's gonna it's gonna be from the way I calculated it now I, I'm gonna finalize it but we're looking at to be in Texas God willing I'm not I'm not supposed to speak to the rabbis in Texas I haven't gotten to all of them yet but we're looking to be the God willing from the 15th of January for for one week we'll be in Texas speaking in in, in Houston maybe a few other places it's a big state. But uh, but during that time will be our, our event, God willing, and uh, we'll finalize it this week. So mid-January looks like the, the date we're talking about. Okay. Excellent. Shalom, guys. Well, always, a, always a pleasure. Real spot on tonight, Rabbi. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. All everybody. right. Shalom, and shalom. for those of, you, those of you out there listening, I plan on being back in just less than two hours, and I'll be broadcasting uh, Rabbi Moshe yeah. Shulman's uh, Noahide Path Uh chat with the north american group by the last one he did with the north american group we had about 35 people in the zoom meeting so it was pretty good session lots of good questions we'll be back in less than two hours with that so uh uh till until next week rabbi are you aiming to do one next week yeah. try next Excellent. week to you okay All right. shalom, shalom, guys. All the best.